So we talked about this early in the show. Uh, Tesla released a video from February 26th where Andrzej Kaparthi, who's the head of AI at Tesla, talked about all the things they're working on with autopilot and their neural net. And first thing I have to point out is this graphic. Sexy cars. So the, isn't that a T? No, that's a C for Cybertruck. Oh, I was thinking it's a T for truck. No, that's not. It's a truck. Yeah, but it's a cyber truck. Sexy cars. So that's cool. Andrej was talking about the 367,500 cars delivered in 2019. That's over 1 million Teslas in their total fleet globally with 3 billion miles on autopilot, 1 billion miles on navigate on autopilot. They've done over 200,000 automated lane changes. They're in over 50 countries and they've done 1.2 million smart summon sessions. Now, who cares? Those are just a bunch of numbers. All I want to know is about Waymo and what they can do. Why aren't these cars full self driving yet? Why do I see Waymo cars driving all by themselves and there is no one in the driver's seat? Well, as Andres pointed out, uh, if you completely map a small area and you know it inside and out, and you put LIDAR all over the car, then yes, you can safely drive a car from point A to point B. But, but there's once, a couple problems with there's that. There's a bunch of problems. One is that. that LIDAR is still extraordinarily expensive. Yep. The price may come down in the future. There's lots of people saying it's going to come down. It hasn't come down at the moment. Nope. Secondly, yeah, you have to map the area with LIDAR extraordinarily well. Yep. And then you can only drive in that area. And only under certain conditions. Like LIDAR doesn't see through snow, for example. Right. Whereas with cameras and you, radar, you can do as well as and better than a human. So that's all fine and good when you're driving your Waymo around in a limited area of Chandler, Arizona. Mm -hmm. But what about edge cases that pop up, which are going to happen all over the world? Even in Chandler, they're going to pop up where, let's say, a llama walks in front of your car. Well, it would probably stop. Hopefully it would. But what if uh, it came up to a stop sign that no longer looked like a stop sign because someone had bent it or damaged it, then you wouldn't know what was going on. So, OK, but so what? Tesla can't can't map that. Oh, so get this. Yeah, they can. So as Carpathy was pointing out, take a look at this. This is this is a bunch of stop signs that you and I can recognize as stop signs, even though there's something wrong with them. They're covered. They're covered. Right. And, and some of them have signs below the stop sign giving a little bit more instruction about the stop sign. So what Tesla does is they find out that their stop sign detector is, let's say, only 40% accurate. Wait, they have a built-in stop sign detector? No, this is software. So, oh, so it's using all the cameras yep. and that's a, the detector is a software component right. deep within the computer. So let's say that it's not being very accurate because so many of these stop signs are blocked by things. Or but How did they figure that out? Well, they've got a whole fleet of a million cars driving around and they can shadow the data. So while you're driving around safely, they can be looking and asking the cars, hey, did you recognize that as a stop sign? And then going, oh, it didn't. Oh, oh. And then they can take all of these non-looking stop sign things, put that into a neural net, get out like an understanding of what a stop sign covered by trees would look like. Then they ask the fleet, which is currently just driving around right now as we speak, these cars being driven around. And it would say, look for stop signs that are being covered by, by trees. And then it'll come back with some and some of them will be stop signs covered with trees, but some of them will be like pictures of stop signs, like murals on the side of a wall. Right. And they can manually weed through some of them, narrow down their neural net because now they'll have way more pictures, put that all into a neural net now the neural net is much better at seeing those stop signs covered by trees. Right. And they did the same thing with those stop signs that have particular exceptions printed below them. Now get this. Guess how many people work on the AI team at Tesla? Oh my God, it must be hundreds. You think it'd be like thousands or millions I mean, just to look yeah, at all those pictures. Yeah, just to do all that work. Carpathy says just a few dozen. What? Yeah. A few dozen people. Wait, wait a minute. The autopilot that they are updated that just got updated to stop at stoplights and stop signs has only a couple dozen people working on it. They have invented something called Operation Vacation, which not only automates your driving, they are automating themselves. It's just all plug and play. This is what I mean about like Elon and acceleration. Like he took derivatives to heart. Like he was mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, everyone like thinks that speed is cool. Like, but the cool thing 
is acceleration. And he literally did that with his cars because they accelerate very fast. But he also understands to get a couple derivatives higher than what you're working on because it's not just about the machine. It's the machine that builds the machine, as he said before. And so that's exactly what they're doing here, yeah. except in relation to automated driving. They're automating the automation of the of the driving. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And Holy I mean, schmoly. And I mean, check this out. They create bird's eye views of maps from the eight cameras to help predict road edges and directions. And I mean, so they're using pixels. And they don't even have three dimensions, right? But they're just estimating and, and then turning it into a map that you're looking down on. It's just, it's mind blowing what they're able to do. And just the fact that they have the fleet puts them so, so far ahead of any other company that wants to do this. Because if you want to start working on the problems the way that they're working on them, step one, acquire about a million cars on the road right. with all the sensors and, and, hardware that you need. Just think about that for a second. Not only the cars, which is amazing, and the cameras, but then being able to collect that data and do Over something- Over the air. And do something useful with it. Like if if you all of a sudden got dumped on your hard drive, you know, 8 billion pictures of stop signs, you wouldn't even know where to begin. Right. These guys know exactly what to do with that information. And as Carpathy pointed out, they've got probably one of the best collections of edge cases of everything out there in the world. Now, if you're excited by all this like we are and you think you might want to work for Tesla, they're hiring. Go to tesla.com slash autopilot AI and you can apply directly there. Like well, but right you, there. You probably need some kind of like PhD or... Elon doesn't even care if you've gone to college or graduated high school. What he cares about is that you know how to solve problems, that you know how to think. So you're saying if I wanted to tomorrow, I could do as much research as I could into autopilot and neural nets, start getting my feet wet, start like trying to do make my own neural nets. And if I make something impressive enough, there's a good chance that I might be hired. Not only that, you could take courses online at MIT that like Lex Friedman teaches courses on autonomy that are free. Go there right now and learn all from the latest, greatest professors on autonomy and then go apply to Tesla. So Elon's kind of like that professor in Goodwill Hunting who like doesn't care that that Will didn't like didn't go to high school and stuff. He just is like this guy's a genius and right. I want him to do great things. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching this Now You Know clip. Head over to Now You Know channel for full episodes of Tesla Time News and in depth. And if you want to treat yourself and your family to something amazing, check this out. Jesse and I have been enjoying Masterclass, where we've been learning all sorts of fun topics from the masters themselves. Comedy from Judd Apatow. Screenwriting from Aaron Sorkin. Investigative journalism from Bob Woodward. Tennis from Serena Williams. And so many more. Click the link down below to support our channel and experience what it's like to learn from the masters at Masterclass.